Uh, good morning or good evening, depending upon when you're watching this. Uh, so, um, so welcome. See, I'm assuming that you've completed your very first test, which is your essay. So here are going to be some tips for your GS2. Uh, overall, I feel GS2 paper is relatively easy. And I think most of you are more comfortable in GS2, right? So I think it is relatively okay for you. Uh, it is easier for you to score for a few reasons. Okay, because the questions in GS2 overall tend to be repetitive in nature and that kind of works in your favor. See, overall, if you have to sort of like do a weightage breakdown of uh, of your uh, GS2, you notice that a good chunk of your paper is basically about, you know, your polity. Okay, and even in polity, it has certain aspects. I'll talk about this. But if you look at the weightage, it's half of your paper, approximately 120, 125, right? That is half of your one, uh, 250 marks. So, um, you know, a lot of people tend to think that, you know, polity is a lot of current events and, you know, current affairs and things like that. Actually, a lot of polity aspects has to go into it. Okay, so we'll talk about this. Then you have governance, social justice, international relations. Okay, these are relatively smaller chunks. Okay, you can even club polity and governance together, right? So you can think of it this way. Social justice, generally, you know, it's a, you know, social justice, especially for the vulnerable groups. Okay, ensuring that, you know, there is substantive equity. Right. So those kind of aspects as well. And then finally, you have international relations that tends to be approximately four questions. Uh, generally, it is four questions. If you can look at that split, generally, it is four questions two ten markers, which is going to be your ninth question, 10th question, and also your 19th and 20th. So that is the general sort of format here. Right. So so mentally uh, uh, be ready for this. See, overall, polity, since it carries the highest weightage, almost half your paper, right, close to 125 marks, a very quick revision of Lakshmi Kant or you know, if you have your short notes on it, that will really help. Okay. Uh, now, when you read your Lakshmi Kant or your short notes, uh, avoid reading it like it is, uh, you know, the nitty gritties for your prelims, right? You focus mostly on the broader uh, uh, topics, you know, judicial independence, your judicial activism, you know, the legislature, the executive, uh, how does one wing basically try to put, uh, or, you know, how, how does it basically sort of uh, check the, the other one? For example, you know, legislation, legislature, how does it basically check the executive? Right. You know, separation of powers, these kind of things is basically what you need to take a look at. Right. So you need not get lost in the nitty gritties. OK, like you did in prelims. OK, so stick to uh, broader questions. How exactly does the democracy, OK, Indian democracy, how does it basically function? OK, uh, uh, both in terms of theoretically using the articles and what it is meant to be, along with how does it basically operate practically? OK, what is the real situation? Right. Uh, is parliament, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, for instance, parliamentary debates. OK, how good is it? Right. So, of course, the legislature is supposed to put a lot of pressure on the executive. But how has India performed with regard to that? OK, not recent times, but overall, you know, uh, how exactly has it been? OK, so so if you have any quick notes on these topics, you can go through your entire polity, just skim through them. I mean, I think that should basically give you a quick idea and that should be more than sufficient. Uh, uh, to be honest, the best way to do this is to review the topics from the tests from your round one, round two, and round three that you've just finished. Okay. Most of you have written and you've done, you know, really well. Okay. Since end of August, whatever you've written post that have been like pretty good. So you, even if you can revise those, I think that will uh, put you in a good, good spot. If you feel like there are some topics that you need to go through, you can basically go through all the, uh, the you know, the daily half tests that you've been doing, right? So you can go through them and look at the value addition that you have done. Okay. Uh, you know, based on what we have shared, add those, just, just revise those. I think that should more than uh, uh, sufficient. Uh, to handle these questions uh, confidently. Okay, more than enough. Okay, so so again, you know, just to remind, just just don't forget to look at those value addition docs as much as possible, just for some extra elements. Okay, you know, few extra marks per question that will also help. Uh, the third aspect here is going to be also pay attention to your introductions and conclusions, especially from what we have provided. Okay, if you can go through the value addition, especially from round one, uh, the value addition doc that we had provided. Okay. Uh, if you've studied them and I think you've been, uh, you have used them to a great extent in the subsequent tests. Okay. So just ensure that you're applying those frameworks. Okay. You have to be extremely strategic, you know, with their usage. Okay. Uh, what do I mean by you have to be strategic with their usage? So let us say that, you know, you have, you know, intros and conclusions and you have certain aspects that you want to bring in, right? You're going to have only four questions on IR, right? So just stay prepared, you know, where to use the right intro, right conclusion and, of course, you have to adjust it based on the questions, exact demands as well. Right. So that is that. Well, with regard to governance, right. So see, uh, governance, may there'll be a lot of topics that will have a lot of, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, 
you know, there are a lot of common portions from your anthropology as well. So, you know, whatever you're going to be studying, the, the constitutional safeguards for the SCs, the STs, uh, the, you know, the, the the schemes, the initiatives, you know, the evaluation of those initiatives, you know, the way forward. So all of those things, basically, you'll be able to use it here, but be mentally prepared to use it here. Okay, with regard to the minorities, we've done that in a great bit of detail, you know, linguistic minorities, religious minorities, right? So there are a lot of those aspects that you can basically bring in here. Okay, how do you sort of separate yourself from, uh, uh, you know, from the rest? Okay, try to bring in as many of these examples statistics whatever you can okay any any you may not be able to do this for every point okay but try to see how many ever you can do you do it okay but do not stop and think uh that you know if i don't have a you know a, a way to validate this particular point it's fine if you can do it for 80 percent of the points you're still a winner okay more than enough if you can do even 80 percent of what you have done in the in in the last couple of weeks tests okay more than sufficient more than sufficient. Anything more than that is basically a, uh, a bonus, right? So that is that. Apart from that, in governance, I'll also tell you a few topics. You can just note these down as well. Okay, so uh, poverty, hunger, health. Okay, so all of those kind of topics as well, right? Poverty, hunger, health, education, skill development, bureaucracy, uh, bureaucratic reforms. Okay, panchayat. These are all very, very common sort of topics. Okay, these are all kind of common topics that are asked in your UPSC exam. Uh, so be thoroughly prepared for these. I've given validation for uh, many of these as well. Okay, and you've also written on them multiple times. Okay, but again, you know, because the exam is coming up, you it's it's important to just revisit those and ensure that ensure that you you know you've covered all the angles. Okay, if needed, you can read more. Okay, if you want, you can basically add some fresh points if you uh, I would I don't think you need it okay but if you feel like you know I'm really lagging in this particular part okay only then you can do this okay or if you need to if you need anything you can basically reach out for any sort of additional points or wherever you are lagging okay then you have social justice right uh, I guess social justice is basically what you've covered so then you have so so one more thing is that you know when you're writing social justice again remember okay ensure that you know you add the legislations add the administrative initiatives add the government schemes in your answers always link these uh, you know uh, uh, with uh, you know these so whatever topic it is always try to link it to these you know you can bring it in as initiatives or you know uh, you can use this as validation for certain points right okay uh, so you could do that and also try to link all, as many of these things possible with relevant constitutional articles or supreme court judgments okay and that will basically strengthen your points you know wherever you can remember you know uh, that is that is uh, that's pretty good the next one is going to be ir see ir is you know it's four questions it's 50 marks but it's relatively scoring Right. I mean, uh, you know, it's again, you know, the themes tend to be repetitive here. See, for IR overall, uh, what I would suggest is that, you know, you just leverage the value added uh, content that has been provided. OK, uh, go through especially that round one. OK, you know, particularly pay attention to the frameworks given the introductions, the conclusions. Right. All you're going to have is four IR questions. Right. So the references that are given Henry Kissinger, your Kennedy, your Article 51. Right. All of those things are going to be used. Just think that. Uh, you know, these these topics are not for creative thinking. Have a plan. You know, this is basically what I'm going to use and this is where I'm going to use. Just decide, okay, here I'll use this. Okay, for this particular question, I'll use this. For this one, I will use that. Intro, I will use. You, you get the picture, right? And then just go execute. No thinking involved here. Just execute. The rest of it should be basically the body where you might have to sort of recall some ideas. But even within the body, okay, try to use the general framework that we've provided. Okay, and I've seen that you uh, are able to use it to a great extent, right? But you just have to tweak some specifics and examples. See, for instance, if you prepared an answer on, let's say, I2U2, okay, or, you know, on BIMSTEC, doesn't matter. You can apply a very similar sort of structure for most multilateral organizations and India's role in them. Okay, this tend to be very similar in themes, right? Use the same 10 sort of subheadings that I had given you. Okay, uh, um, that's that's basically all you need. Just adjust the examples accordingly, right? You know, so those are the most important things. Okay, so whether it is your BIMSTEC, whether it is your SAR, whether any other grouping that it is, India's approach remains largely similar when it comes to these. Okay, it remains largely similar to these. Okay, so uh, and and do the same thing. Even if it if the question is about you know the, uh, you know if it's about let's say bilateral relations. Okay, use the general framework that we have given. Okay, what is used for one country can be you know uh, appropriately adapted to the others. You just have to tweak some of the specifics, some of the examples, and so on. Because India scores strategies. Okay, like the economic cooperation, the defense collaboration, the cultural exchange. You know all those things generally remain more or less consistent across most bilateral ties. 
right across most bilateral ties so whether it is india us or whether it is india russia or whether it is india japan use the exact same keywords sorry key subheadings okay and adjust only the country specific details that should more than suffice okay so this ensures that you are well prepared without overthinking for you know many questions especially when it comes to ir right without having to do much of thinking or heavy lifting, especially it is going to be the last couple of questions that you're going to be attempting. So just be ready. You know, most of the work is basically already done, right? Similarly, in GS2, you also have this. I thought I'll just speak a little more. See, the vulnerable groups topics, right? So it could be anything, right? It could be women. It could be uh, persons with disabilities, transgender, elderly, minorities, uh, religious minorities, linguistic minorities, and so on and so forth, right? So just try to see that you're able to sort of incorporate all the government uh, uh, initiatives, Okay, uh, it has to be government. Okay, so it could be ad administration, it could be policy, it could be legislation, it could be whatever it is, executive, legislature, you know, uh, either if there's a, a judiciary based, uh, you know, sort of like judgments on it, right? So you try to incorporate them. Apart from those, you also try to bring in as many of the, um, you know, um, the key articles, you know, from the constitution, you know, you have your DPSPs, you have your fundamental duties, you know, uh, and, and wherever you find they are relevant. And, and those are kind of broad, you can use them in multiple uh, uh, of these groups, right? So then you just try to appropriately sort of like, you know, connect them to your answers. Okay, so that is basically what you would have to do for these portions. I'm asking 10 subheadings. Now, for how long am I asking okay. 10 subheadings? I told you to keep that ready. Now, where is it? Seven. Solutions I asked, now. let us say that you know whether it is women whether it is whatever sort of a vulnerable group it is like SCSTs I, I think you know you would be very well prepared okay um, because you know we've done that in great detail you know in, in your optional as well right but a lot of those are common right so so for instance let us say it is you know you go to the preamble you know you have your social economic political justice okay you have your equality status opportunity right okay fraternity you know all those things can be uh, you know the values to protect persons with either disabilities or transgender or for elderly for minorities right you know so so all of those things can be used here because you know what does it do it basically ensures every citizen a just and a free and a you know a, a, a dignified sort of existence right similarly you can bring in a lot of the fundamental rights okay for regardless of which group that you are talking about right so if let us say that we are talking about the group for let's say women okay or for disabilities right fundamental uh, right to equality article 14 right equality before the law equal protection of the laws right so it is definitely relevant for most of these groups right to ensure there is no discrimination the article 15 right Usme, you have your clause one you have your clause so so you know you can basically just use how you want it right so uh, it's it's basically saying that the state you know should not discriminate against any citizen on the grounds of you know religion caste uh, race sex place of birth you know and and so on so that's definitely going to be relevant for your transgenders it is relevant for your minorities who may face discrimination based on either their gender identity uh, on their on their religion on their ethnicity and so on and so forth right so so and that is that uh, article 16 but that is a little more about public employment but that could be another angle that you essentially bring in as well similarly article 17 okay uh, article 17 is untouchability okay today there is new untouchability that is appearing against you know certain groups of people you know you could you could basically you know make a mention to uh, uh, to that as well okay uh, you know, so so Article uh, 17, while it might be for untouchability, it is for all forms of discrimination, right? So there is discrimination today for transgenders also, right? So you it depends on how exactly you want to sort of like connect to this. But however, that is an article that is best used for caste-based discrimination. Okay, so I guess you could avoid this. But again, I'm just giving you an idea. Right to uh, Article 21, for instance, right to life and personal liberty, it is so broad. You can use it for transgenders, you can use it for PWDs, you can use it for, you know, it, everybody deserves to live a life with dignity okay and it covers all the groups right so you could basically connect them hmm? 
So all of these things can be done. Similarly, you know, you have your fundamental duties, you have your DPSPs, right? So Article 38, you know, the promotion of welfare for, or, or you know, uh, justice, uh, uh, you know, uh, securing the welfare of the people, right? So that is something that you can use. Article 39 has multiple clauses. A, I guess that is about, you know, having the right to adequate means of livelihood, right? You could have, so, so there are many of these things. So you just ensure that when you're writing an answer on these uh, uh, vulnerable groups, try not to make a, an argument solely based on ethics of equality, right? You know, uh, equality is all about, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's a very good indication of why um, knowledge is power, right? When you are empowered with the knowledge about the rights that is available, right? Okay, it is difficult to sort of discriminate against you, right? So you should argue for them okay on the merits okay of many articles many provisions many legislations you know and 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 other sort of rights okay that are enshrined in the constitution right including the preamble right? so all of those things is basically going to sort of you know differentiate your answers compared to somebody else's right so you try to integrate them overall in multiple parts so i hope this part is clear this was uh, for women but you know you can uh, incorporate them in other parts as well so uh, see overall i think you know in terms of your volume and i think this is your very this, this this paper is going to be one of your strongest papers from from what i have seen especially in in september right all of you are feeling very comfortable with regard to polity um uh, so so that is that now mostly it it is going to come down to execution now execution ke liye, remember uh, the exam center is going to be slightly harder than home slightly harder than room slightly harder than library okay it's it's a different sort of an ambience right so remember it's going to be a little harder okay so even the speed has to be uh, you know, just plan two hours and 55 minutes rather than three hours. Okay, it, it is a little difficult to sort of complete your paper, uh, uh, you know, uh, in exam, right? So just factor that. But overall, what I want you to do is that, you know, um, do not think, see, see, for instance, the scores, right? So we talked about this easy, medium and difficult, right? So you have all of these things, easy, medium and difficult. So be prepared for the questions on all of these topics, right? All of these kind of questions should be there, right? So that you are going to find certain number of questions that are easy. There are certain number of questions that are going to be of medium where you have to do a little bit of thinking, a little bit of crafting, a little bit of tweaking. At the same time, you are going to be having questions. Jahanpe, it is going to be very difficult. Let me write it here. Okay. So what you exactly want to do is that, and general trend is like this, 10 to 12 questions, try to do above average. Right. So, so, uh, you know, you have a whole bunch of students who are also adequately prepared. They've actually put in their heart and soul into these last two and a half, three months. Right. But in these 10 to 12 questions where we kind of predict the questions, right. You know, it, it is going to be a repetition of the question, possibly slightly tweaked. Right. So this is basically what you're going to see in those kind of questions. You try to see if you can get a little bit of extra, a little above average. Okay. If you can do that, great. Okay. There are going to be questions Jahanpe, you have to just somehow manage to stay with the rest of the crowd right? Just average answers. Okay. Average to the rest of the good students, right? If you can do that, you know, you're, you're holding yourself pretty strong. And then you're going to have approximately, you know, some four questions, let's say in 10 markers and 20 markers, maybe a couple of questions a little harder. And then, you know, in 20, in 15 markers, you're going to have a couple of questions that are slightly harder. Okay. So what do you do? You basically try to, uh, uh, so, so um, the thing is, it's, it's about mindset, right? If and when you come across these difficult questions, do not worry. It is actually quite normal. Don't let, you know, uh, you know, a few tough questions, okay? Some 10 tough pages. Don't let that shake you. Instead, you focus on the larger picture. The larger picture here, the bigger picture here is basically you have a total of not 10 pages. You have a total of 200 pages of GS spread across 12 hours, two days. Okay, whether you want to score a 420, 430, 440, okay, it is not across these 10 pages, it is basically across 200 pages. So on average, you know, uh, assume that, you know, one third of the paper is going to be easy, one third of it is going to be moderate, also be mentally prepared that one third of the paper is going to be just approximately 66 pages of tough, tough questions, okay, which will basically require some, you know, uh, a little bit of a fight in you to be able to sort of figure it out. So, and, and also in terms of the mindset, you just see to it that you're not dwelling on the past questions. So let us say that you had a bad question, okay? And somehow you were able to manage it. Now that you're done with that question, it's the past, okay? So do not be thinking about that while you're writing the present question, okay? And neither, even if you think that, you know, morning exam is done, why did I write that particular thing? How did I not uh, remember this? Because, you know, as you keep thinking on it, you will keep getting more and more, right? But even if you're able to get more ideas, you know that you cannot 
put those things into those two pages and three pages. So let it be. Whatever has happened has happened. Okay. So do not be thinking about the previous questions or the previous uh, papers while you are writing. So keep your mind fresh. Give your best over that particular page. And overall, if you can keep doing this, okay, and fight it out, approximately 200 pages you have. Well, not approximately, you have to write all 200 pages. Okay. And, and give your best. Okay. And let the evaluators decide what is your overall score. Okay, is it 420 plus or minus? Okay, 430, 440, we never know. You just stay focused and you stay strong on your execution. Right, I've also mentioned about the time, right? So <clears throat> completion of the paper is going to be slightly harder. So if you have been able to finish in, let's say, 3 and 301 and 302 and 303, okay, just remember that it is going to be a lot harder. Okay, so you've got to push somehow, you know, another five, six, seven minutes, right? So that is basically something that is required from your end. Okay, so plan that. So depending upon whether you're attempting the 15 questions or the 10 markers, right? Most of you, I believe, are starting with the 15 markers. So just have that in your mind. Okay, it's 9.55 or 2.55. Okay, 10.50. Okay, or uh, it should be, um, you know, uh, whatever it is, the 55 minute marks, right? So uh, you try to finish those. And then you have two sets of five questions and five questions. Do not put all the pressure in the last five, 10 markers. Okay, there will be a compromise. You've seen this, right? So we do not want that. You try to win in the very first. Okay, if you can ensure that you take that first test as a 55 minute test in which you have to complete five, 15 markers, trust me, the rest of the paper will be relatively smooth because you've already picked up speed and you're never getting to a point where you're playing catch up. Okay, so that is something that you would want to avoid. So as long as you give your 200 pages, right? So let them decide. Right? That's, that makes it a lot easier. So so this one, you just be as disciplined as possible. Okay, and just to wrap up, you know, I, I just want to remind you, and this is something that, you know, you have to reinforce in your head as well. Okay, I think most of you are in good, good spirits. Right, see, remember how hard you have worked for these past three months. Okay, literally, you know, you've, you've got to treat yourself as the king of the jungle. You're, you're the lion of the jungle, right? You've You've been... Uh, learning, you've been uh, uh, increasing your knowledge base, you have been honing your skills in writing, in in, in, in speed writing, right? all of these things, you are actually ready for the 200 page challenge. Okay, so now as you head into these, these final three hours and three hours and three hours and three hours, right, you just believe in your ability to tackle whatever comes your way. Trust that you can handle this paper better than anyone else. Okay, make sure you focus on the implementation, right? We want those introductions, we want those quality conclusions, we want those articles, we want those quotes, right? Use everything that you have prepared. Okay, just give it your all. Even if you can do 80%, okay, even if you can do 80% of what you have been delivering in, in these months, I think it is a huge win for you. Okay, I think you should be immensely proud of what you've done. And once these two tests are done tomorrow, okay, so I guess you would have done two tests, three tests, okay, with uh, approximately another four more to go. Okay, I'm, I'm not inclu including your English and, and your regional language. I think that, that should be relatively safe. Okay, so that's all I've got for this. Okay, so all the best champs. Go out there and show what you've got. Hmm? All the best.